In our previous lecture, we focused on a specific type of ion channel known as the potassium ion channel. In fact, we use the potassium ion channel to generalize our results about other ion channels. So what we said was the fact that ion channels are ion specific and what that means is they're very, very effective in actually moving a specific type of ion across that cell membrane. And so in the case of the potassium ion channel, we saw that these only move potassium ions across that membrane while preventing the movement of all other types of ions. For instance, sodium ions will not move across the potassium ion channel. And this is a result of the structure of the internal cavity inside this channel, as we discussed in the previous lecture. So basically, these channels, ion channels in general, are very, very effective in actually moving that correct type of ion across that membrane. Now, the second property of ion channels that you have to be familiar with is the fact that they're not only highly effective, but they're also highly efficient. So the rates at which they actually move these ions across the membrane are very, very high. In fact, the rates at which these membrane channels actually move these ions across the membrane are over 1,000 times as great as the rates at which membrane pumps actually move molecules and ions across the cell membrane. So they're very, very efficient. But the question is, what exactly makes them so efficient? What is it about the structure of that membrane protein that makes it so efficient? So basically, it's a simple answer. It's the fact that there's electrostatic repulsion that exists between two positive charges when they're found in close proximity with one another. And as we'll see in just a moment, it's this electrostatic repulsive force that drives these ions to move very quickly and very efficiently across that channel, across the cavity inside that channel. So let's recall the structure of the potassium ion channel. So inside the potassium ion channel, we have a cavity. So we have about two thirds of the cavity that is filled with water. And the rest of the cavity basically consists of a sequence of amino acids we call the selectivity filter. And inside that selectivity filter region, we have four sites. And to each one of these sites, we can have a single one of these ions actually bind. And the affinity with which that ion bonds onto each one of these four sites is exactly the same. So basically, let's take a look at this diagram here. So we have one of these ions, a potassium ion, basically binds onto site number one inside that selectivity filter. What happens next? What happens next that actually drives the quick and efficient movement of that ion along those sites, along that selectivity filter? Well, basically, what happens next is, as a result of the difference in the electrochemical gradient, we have another ion channel that basically moves into this aqueous uh, environment inside the cavity. And before this ion moves into site number one, this ion has to move into site number two. And it begins moving into site number two as a result of electrostatic repulsion. And when this ion moves into site one, uh, site two, site one is unoccupied, and so this one moves into site one. And now, this is what we have. We have two charges, positive charges, in close proximity, separated by certain distance d. And we know from basic electromagnetism, they will basically feel an electromagnetic force. To be more specific, they're going to feel an electrostatic force, assuming these are point charges and the stationary in space. And so this is the equation that gives us the force that they actually feel. And so we see that the smaller the distance is, the greater our force is. And so what that means is when these two ions are found at sites which are exactly adjacent, so next to one another, they will feel a high, a strong electrostatic repulsive force. And that will propel these, uh, this ion to basically move to the third side, to this position along that selecti uh, selectivity filter. 
And so this process will basically continue. So what will happen in the next step is another ion basically moves into this aqueous cavity and then we see that this ion basically moves into the final fourth, uh, fourth, uh, fourth site. This one will move from site one to site two and then this one moves into site one. And again, because these are in close proximity, they will repel. And this one moves from, uh, from two to three and this one is basically forced out and it moves onto the other side of that membrane. And so we see that it's because of this electric repulsive force that exists between these charges that drives this reaction, drives this process and makes it so effective and increases the rate to such a high amount. So it's because of this electrostatic force that this process is driven to such a high rate. So we see that ion channels are not only effective in actually moving the specific types of ions, but they're also very efficient. The rates at which they actually move these ions are very, very high. In fact, the rates are so high in some cases that it's as if there is no barrier between these two sides. It's as if these ions are simply diffusing across the membrane without that membrane actually being there. That's how high these rates can get.